वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल नो वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल शीज बैक यूर शीज बैक से हाई हेलो गाइज वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल सो वॉट डू आई सी आफ्टर दिस वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल दिस इज आवर पॉडकास्ट है गाइज वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल आई एम योर होस्ट एरी एंड आई मैन and we welcome you all to another episode of our podcast unspoken where we speak to our heart's content so this is basically a reuni- reunion episode uh, so we thought that uh, for this episode we would talk about something that we both like marvel movies yeah so for this episode we are going to talk about we, we are, gonna, are going to give a review yes. on uh, doctor strange multi universe of madness <laughs> multi multi verse this is what happens <laughs> when we get together yeah and both yeah. of us are sleep deprived yeah yeah let's, let's begin. begin for the first doctor strange movie i always felt like it was very short about 2/3 of the movie was about doctor strange's life <laughs> as a surgeon his accident trauma his journey to the sorcery world his lessons only the last 20 minute or so consisted of the last actual battle though it was very impactful and fun the movie made mm-hmm. me feel like it ended too fast yeah 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 but this movie was like hit after hit after hit it was yeah. full of thriller suspense and chills though there were moments where i felt like what the f-? but uh, i was never bored exactly and in the middle <laughs> the movie literally turned into a horror movie and some of the scenes like i felt like i was watching a thriller yeah there was uh, i remember clearly there was a scene where wanda was limping with her face full of, full blood. of blood oh my lord that that scene. was some horror movie sh- there were scenes where i saw it coming but i still ended up jumping I out mean, of my seat of course that's why it's called jump scares and also there was another scene <laughs> where uh, scarlet witch came out of that reflection remember oh <laughs> if you put if you put that scene in an exorcist movie it would fit that was literally a horror movie scene i want elizabeth olsen in a horror movie ah, that's it yes and uh, since we are speaking of these scenes uh, i have to say the best part of the movie was definitely the cgi i mean marvel always does great visual exactly. effects and stuff and there was that part where uh, they were uh, moving to other universes that wow. part was something else also like towards the end when uh, doctor strange was fighting with the evil doctor strange the musical fight scene <laughs> That, that was, was the best. I was like, I never saw something like that exactly, in movies. Exactly, like I never watched anything like that. I didn't. Mean, that was really unexpected. Yeah, and uh, the movie was so captivating. I was so into the movie. I remember while we were watching in the theater, I heard someone sniffing beside me. I thought that someone was crying, and that someone was Eddie. I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't crying. I was feeling cold. <laughs> Anyway, I think that she cried. No, why? I was cry? so into the movie. I couldn't even turn my head to see what was going on. I, yeah, she hit me. I tried to hold her hand and she hit me. I never forget. You disturbed me while I was watching Benedict Cumberbatch. I was like trying to hold your hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, continue. One of the best part about this movie was the character development of each character actually. Yeah, so let's talk about Doctor Strange. Yeah. yeah. In the first movie we see a drastic character change. Mm-hmm. Though he is still a bit stubborn sometimes but uh, you know he uses it to he his uses advantage. it yeah to his advantage like uh, his stubbornness actually defeated Dormammu. So there Dormammu I have come to bargain. <laughs> <clears throat> in this movie however we see a totally new side of doctor strange ah, the true. emotional exactly. side actually his guilt of how he treated doctor palmer before and therefore lost her the way he apologizes to her yeah. it actually shows his maturity yeah too his unrequited love for doctor palmer he says that he still loves yeah, her he was guy <laughs> yeah shows how much he really cares about the people yeah. around him he really changed a lot a lot exactly but i have to say that i found uh, stephen's unrequited love subplot somewhat boring they should have ended the uh, strange farmer chapter within the wedding with the wedding 
the way they drag their relationship even in another the, yeah, universe multiverse yeah didn't actually settle well with me they should have focused more on stephen's character or the other relationship i also didn't feel any chemistry between them yeah i mean exactly the other uh, relationships like the romance between Wong. dr strange and dr strange and wong exactly they could have actually explored their relationship more yeah. and there was a part i really loved it where uh, Be- benedict uh, sorry stephen Stephen. <clears throat> Where Stephen was uh, taken, uh, Stephen went to another uh, universe Stephen with... Stephen and uh, Wong got separated. Separated. Wong was with... Uh, Wong was with, yeah, Scarlet, Scarlet Witch. Witch and Stephen was like, I'm his only hope, so I have to go back. That was really good, right? So they could have actually explored uh, the relationship. They have a very epic bromance and exactly. we don't talk about it. It a lot. Exactly. I've never heard anyone talk about yeah. uh, Benedict. Benedict, the, I mean. The sarcastic <laughs> yeah. comment they do with each do other. With they, other. They, yeah, they're, they're really very cool. fun, right? Yeah. And uh, we actually got to know more about uh, this Doctor Strange through the strangers from other, other universes. Universe. Exactly. Yeah, like how he was more... Uh, compassionate was, yeah like, it was different from yeah, the, the other. ponytail um strange <laughs> yeah, the the ponytail, ponytail strange actually wanted to sacrifice america exactly just to uh, but we cannot really blame him though yeah no but this strange actually want uh, actually uh, would rather risk his life than risk america's life no no he didn't want to risk her life he wanted to do something that would save the universe i think <laughs> no but in the end, Wong actually told Strange that there is no other way than to take America's power, power. but he didn't do it. Yeah, that's true. He that's didn't why do he's it. different from yeah, the other Yeah, he's very different Doctor from... Strange, we got to yeah. know more about him yeah, in that way. exactly. And since we are talking about Doctor Strange, <laughs> I have to say he was looking so... <laughs> he was looking so hot. I was so distracted. In like, the beginning, when Ponytail Strange oh, yeah, actually I... came to scream... You touched me and I was like, go away, move away from me. Don't touch me. It's not my fucking fantasy. He was so hot. hot. He is. I mean, always. And evil strange. Ah, oh, dark strange. This was smart. The, uh, <laughs> what is wrong that with was, us? That was, that was very hot. Okay, so now let's talk about America Chavez. We do not see much of America's backstory in the movie except for how she lost her parents and was chased by monsters and Wanda. But what we do see is her powers and relationship with Doctor Strange. Yeah. From a person who could only activate her powers when she was scared to a person who became brave enough to open a portal voluntarily. Yeah. To a new apprentice at Kamartaj, her character did develop a lot. Yes. Her relationship with Steven, she, uh, she was first afraid of Strange because she was first betrayed I by... I pretty yeah. intimidating. <laughs> no, she was betrayed by Ponytail Strange. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, I love how Stephen tried to save her tra- uh, several times and reassured her multiple times that he would never betray her. Yeah. Or, and also, she was initially scared of her powers because... She didn't she, understand them. Yeah, she didn't understand them and she lost her parents because, because of her of power. Yeah, but yeah. after Strange reassured her, then she became... That she is powerful enough, she actually yeah, she overcame gained- her Fear yeah, and yeah. gain confidence. Yeah. And she defeated Wanda. I Wanda's. love this teacher-student dynamic. Yeah, exactly. This is uh, everything you say. I agree with you. And also the fact that actually this is something which I had a problem with. It's uh, like the plot. It centered around america but we don't know anything about her backstory yeah the subplots took too much time that they didn't actually focus on america that much that much maybe in like the future movies yeah, we'll we get would, to know more yeah, about yeah, it yeah, she yeah. has really good potential potential yeah and her power i i don't think it's like very uh Uncommon. unique yeah, yes unique. it's very unique she said that she was the only one in all the universe. universes and also the fact that no other universes had a version of her yeah. that's also very she one of the most unique character. characters now let's talk about wanda now after i watched the trailer i actually thought and i think a lot of us we thought that uh the evil doctor strange he's going to be probably going to be the main villain but we saw that it's not 
Doctor Strange, it was actually Scarlet Witch. Right now, Wanda or Scarlet Witch is my favorite MCU villain. It actually, yeah. like, yeah, she's actually a anti-hero, but she is just amazing. I heard many people say how unsatisfied they were that Wanda is uh, portrayed more powerful than Doctor Strange. Strange yeah. yeah, but in my opinion, Doctor Strange is actually the most powerful character in MCU right now. And she, he needs a villain or anti-hero who is at par with him, yeah. who challenges him to break his every boundaries, who makes him look weak, who makes him actually seem vulnerable. So they are both complementary to each yeah. other. Wanda did exactly the same. A powerful yeah. hero always needs a powerful, powerful villain. villain. Yeah. Yeah. Now I have read reviews where people said that they were sick of Wanda's sad man justification. Wanda is a criminal. She did wrong. And in their opinion, they might be right. But in my opinion, her actions, I really can't like put her in a total negative light. Yeah. She is a gray and black and white character. She, she is, is a gray character. Gray character, actually. exactly. Not black and white. Uh, yeah. Wanda had arguably the most sad backstory out of all the MCU characters. Yeah. She first lost her parents, then she was used by Hydra, then Ultron. When she finally tried being the good guy, she lost her brother, her only family. Exactly. And then she finally found someone she loved, that is Vision, but yeah. then again she lost him twice. And at this point, she lost everything, her family, friends, boyfriend, this guilt, trauma, devastation led her to take over a whole town just so she could live a happy life with her husband and children, even if it was a mere fantasy. And when she understood that she had done harm to people, she gave it up. Yeah. Her whole fantasy world where she was happy fell apart. And then in Doctor Strange, she said that she always dreamed about her children. You remember that she said she always yeah, dreamed yeah, about dream her children, around, being yeah. happy with her children. And dreams are the windows to other yeah. universes. And then she yeah. woke up to reality where she is alone. She is all alone. You know, it takes a toll on her. It takes a toll on everyone who has been in this situation, who lost everyone. She had done, actually, she had done wrong stuff, but... I can't deny the fact that she was very miserable. She was de devastated. A person in her position, it would be very... How do you I say it? <clears throat> she was a victim of the consequences. Yeah, she got hit yeah. again and again. I uh, agree to this that uh, Wanda is the most tormented character in MCU. And you could literally feel her emotion in uh, Multiverse of Madness. Like when she was saying that I would never hurt anyone. Uh, I'm scene, not a monster. That scene was very emotional. Very emotional. And it's very symbolic too. And the way she told Doctor Strange that you break rules and you become a hero. I break rules and I become a villain. It's unfair. And uh, so basically the real Wanda was still inside her but she was taken over by the Scarlet Witch, her alter ego. And uh, this is entirely my uh, interpretation that uh, since the uh, Wanda had to go through so much. She saw her husband die so many times. She was in desperate need of love and compassion. The path she took, that was definitely wrong. But I feel like she craved for this love and compassion. And when in the end, when she saw that uh, how much her kids in another universe uh, loved their mother, she probably understood and was satisfied to see that Maybe it's some other universe, but she was loved. And also uh, her interaction with uh, uh, the Wanda from the other universe, that actually showed that she needed love and compassion. And I was kind of feeling bad for her, you know. And uh, yeah, the, the scene where the other uh, Wanda said that they will, they be, will loved. be loved, that actually reassured uh, Wanda. And uh, actually, whatever Wanda did, her actions were influenced by the Dark Hole. You know, now exactly. this Dark Hole is an interesting uh, book. Now, whoever be uses the Dark Hole, they actually become ambitious. Um, have you watched Agents of Shield? Nope. 
so in agents of shield i think it was in season 4 they actually explained uh, the dark hole really well so i'm not getting into details because i don't want to give you a spoiler or anybody else a spoiler dark hole was also like one of the main plots of uh, multiverse of madness and uh, another thing that's more most important which i initially didn't understand when remember the first time when uh, dr palmer asked uh doctor strange if uh, he was happy was like yeah. are you happy that was really something yeah. that hit me hard too yeah because this are you happy i feel like the entire movie was based on that it has a a uh, deeper meaning isn't it something we ask ourselves every day too like are we happy and this urge to have more and give way to temptation that what the dark hole actually intensifies there are a lot of things that we want that we don't get and the dark hole basically makes us believe that we can have anything and whatever way t- we take whether it's moral or immoral uh it doesn't really matter as long as we get what we want so basically dark hole takes advantage of our vul- vulnerability although towards the end that we saw that wanda was strong enough to come out of uh, the influence of the dark hole at least that's what it seems as of now you know oh, don't curse it <laughs> i mean it's marvel we don't i don't trust marvel there are many loopholes <laughs> exactly <laughs> and i also knew that doctor strange would also face uh, the consequences for using the dark hold that's how powerful the book is and the third eye yeah now we're going to see what happens in the next movies okay. yeah that there were some things some points that i actually didn't like in the movie i already talk, uh, talked about doctor strange and palmer's love story that was it was really more draggy yeah. yeah unnecessary and we needed more of america we needed a lot more of america the scene with the fantastic fours yeah that, that was, was really, really unsatisfactory in the sense uh, they didn't get to fight much women and uh, professor x they still had a chance but the other two characters uh, they died way too soon that's actually like yeah i found that they didn't actually serve much to the plot plot they exactly at just, least uh, they even if they went there they wouldn't actually it wouldn't affect the plot that much yeah. it was really unnecessary yeah. and the way they died so quickly it so quickly like, exactly that's my complaint like that is the only complaint i have and about mordo from what we see in the first doctor strange movies uh, plot uh, post credit scene mordo is actually he actually have a great potential of being a negative character Ancient one said that he actually is a black and white character. The ending of the movie was actually very beautiful because it was symbolic. How Scarlet Witch was defeated was uh, actually symbolic because America she understood that Scarlet Witch is too powerful to be defeated with physical strength. So she just showed her the what the actual picture is. and scarlet wood which realized america's ending was also really good she didn't uh, get a family but she got uh, people who would take care of her who would actually stand for her a place where she could you know she could call her own a yeah, place the kamar taj the kamar taj that was really nice okay so we talked for a really long time now to conclude uh the thing that i have to say about this movie is the movie uh, was very dark It was very gory some of the scenes that were very gory and there was a lot of violence I don't think I wa- watched a uh, uh, Marvel, Marvel movie. movie that's this dark and violent so this basically set the stage for the this phases next stories uh, because there were a lot of you know stuffs that were left hanging like what is going to happen to doctor strange of course and also they didn't show what happened to america's parents and uh, actually i thought that there would be a connection with uh, the loki series as well because of how the loki series ended yeah. but they didn't show any connection here so yeah that's also something it, it yeah. remains a mystery and there is something i was thinking while watching the movie if 
<laughs> if dreams are really the window to another no, universe, start. don't start. I have had oh, such Jesus. beautiful dreams. I don't want dreams to be actually true because I have so many embarrassing dreams. I kind of want it though. Even if it is embarrassing, think about the ones that are actually good. Oh, and you God, don't want Jesus. me to explain. <laughs> you don't want Jesus. me to talk over it. They were good, really good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. it. That's it for today. And I will be back with another podcast. I will be back now. All right. Yeah. Exciting. Yay. <laughs> so yeah, we'll be back again. And uh, she, she will also do solo episodes. I'll, I'll like, yeah, I'll continue okay. doing a <laughs> <yeah>, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll continue doing solo podcasts and also we'll be back with new videos. Yes. See so you soon. Thank you so much for listening. If you have made this far, we love you guys so much. Thank you for being a part of the small family. And adios. Thank you so much. We love you guys so much. <laughs>